we get, you know, emotional and we start connecting ourselves with this man, with our finances, our body, our uh, signing leases and contracts and, you know, just connecting. And we didn't, we don't even know who we connected to. What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier free engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Be Merry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us today. I'm excited about today's show. Got a chance to meet her on Instagram, and we'll talk about all that good stuff later. But let's address today's guest. She's a graduate of Old Dominion University. She's a woman of faith. I love that. I'm a man of faith as well, so I appreciate that. Uh, she's an aspiring attorney and marriage and family therapist. She enjoys watching Divorce Court in her downtime, and we're going to talk about that as well. And she loves neo-soul music. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to the beautiful Imani Clemens. How are you doing this evening? Hi, Sean. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm doing wonderful, especially because I'm here. Um, I get to talk with you all, share my thoughts and knowledge concerning um, the topics tonight. And I'm really pumped to um, speak with you all tonight. Yes, for sure. Today's segment, we're going to discuss how separation and divorce affects children. Because a lot of times we hear this, but we really don't talk about it in depth. And I want to talk about that as well from your expertise. Um, oh. Um, oh, and before we go into this segment, I would love to know who is your favorite neo soul artist? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so I, all right, so I'll start with favorite. Um, you know, music soul child, of course. Um, I am starting to like the foreign exchange. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, they have some like songs where I'm like. Just their rhythm and their flow is just like, yes. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm actually going to a uh, uh, music soul child, Kim, mm -hmm. and um, let us see. I don't know if I'm saying her name right, yeah. but <laughs> um, I'm actually going to a concert next month. So I'm just excited for that. But yeah, I do love, um, I love that kind of R&B music. I don't know if, I don't want anybody to get mad because we're calling it R&B, but you know, it's just that like mellow, like chill, you know, kind of music. And I love it. I even listen to jazz too. So I'm just one of them. <laughs> oh, so you like old school then. I do. I do. <laughs> That's what's up. Divorce Court. Do you like Judge Toller or do you like, uh, <laughs> who's that, Star Jones? Who you prefer? Okay. So Star Jones is pretty new to me. Um, I have watched her before. Uh, so I, I watched her. A little bit um but judge toller is she it's so funny because me and my friend had this joke um <laughs> we watched uh this video and this guy was like judge toller like making like saying her name very funny so when you just said the name it, it was very funny um <laughs> but i watched a lot of um i like judge judy's approach as as raw and you know, as straightforward and blunt as she is, that's sometimes how you got to be. Um, yeah. <laughs> so just watching how she like doesn't play in her court. Um, and then there's another one, Judge Faith. I yeah. watch Judge Faith sometimes. And then also, um, what's her name? Judge, oh, what's her, is it, it's not Judge Toller, is it? She has a shortcut. Yeah. Um, is that Judge Toller? Yeah. Black woman? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It might be her. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. she's she be getting them in a check too, if, if I'm yeah. thinking correctly. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. She don't so, play. Yeah. So I, I do. Yeah, that is Judge Tiller, now that I think about it. I yeah. do love her. Yeah. I just love, <laughs> also love like the wisdom that she shares in her court as well. You know, like she be sharing some gems. <laughs> she does, for real. Mm -hmm. I usually watch it on YouTube when I get a chance. And I realize I get a lot of comments um, when I'm in a comment section. So it helps me with subscribers as well. Cause they're like, oh, okay. 
well, this guy I know what he's talking about. So that's just a little right. tip for those who uh content creators get in the comment section and you'll be able to get more subscribers and stuff like that. But anyway. Engagement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, let's talk about today's segment. How does separation and divorce affect children? Ooh, that's the that's the question. I gotta take a deep breath before I answer. Um, thank you for your question, Sean. Uh I'll start by saying it affects children in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, physically, of course, because they're dealing with having to go to two separate homes now. Uh emotionally, of course, because um, it's no longer, hey, mom, hey, dad, it's, hey, mom, you know, I got my own different life with my mom now. And hey, dad, I have my own separate life with my dad. So that takes an emotional toll on the child. Um, just seeing that their parents are physically apart. Um, it can be confusing depending on which, you know, how old the child is. Um, and just a lot of mental stress as well. Um, just coping with that, you know, um, trying to figure it out. Cause sometimes as children, um, we love our parents so much that we try to figure out their, you know, their problems. So it's hard to separate, you know, like that's my mom's, you know, my mom and dad's, uh, situation. And, you know, it's sometimes we try to step in as their child and say, you know, cause we may see our mom sad, you know, we might see our, uh, dad sad about the separation. Um, and it feels different, you know, like a child can feel, they can feel the separation. So it's definitely to answer your question, just like all around. Um, and it, as far as like the, um, it depends on the, the child's uh, circumstances as well. So like that can take a toll on, you know, the mother and, you know, the mother and child's relationship, because there could be some parental alienation going on. And for those who don't know what parental alienation is, it's when one parent um, speaks negatively about the other parent um, so that way they can get favor of the child from the child. So um, you can have one parent, you know, the mom talking bad about the dad. Um, you shouldn't go over to your dad's or putting even putting even um, thoughts and feelings like trying to force that into their children like. You know, how do you feel when you go to your dad's house? You know, do you like your dad's new girlfriend? Or so they can be force feeding their child information. Um, and the other parent is like, well, why isn't the child spending as much time with me? Um, so that just leaves a lot of room for um, negative, you know, bad talking to other parent. Um, and that's definitely de detrimental to the child. A lot of a lot of parents um, seem to not understand that the importance and the significance of how detrimental that could be to a child's emotional development. Um, because if, it's like, if you can't trust your parents, who can you trust? Right. So um, if you have one parent saying that, you know, your, you know, your dad is such a bad person, your mom is, a, you know, a bad person. It's like, you know, I mean, no one on the street wants somebody to talk about their parent negatively. So just to see like, dad, why are you talking bad about mom? You know, like, it's very confusing because the, um, I'm, I'm Christian and I know that you mentioned that. And, um, the Lord, the Lord created family for us to be a unit, not for us to be rivals. So when a child is looking at one parent as, you know, well, this is the rival of my other parent and they love both of them, you know? So, um, it definitely se separates the team, you know, family is a team and it's hard because you feel like you're, you know, rivals instead of a team at that point. So I hope that answers your question, but just, just yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, 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 because there is something that you said, you said God created us to be a, a family and not a unit. Uh, yeah. You said, are you uh, not to be, you said to be a unit and, not to be and, in a position or something. What are you saying? Yeah, like we're we're to be a unit and not to be rivals. There we go. So <laughs> a lot of you know, yeah, a lot of the times when like you know parents separate, um, depending on how you know when you're older, you can kind of comprehend. Okay, it just didn't work out. But um, there's a lot of tension that a child can feel when their parents are no longer together. Um, and it's hard. It's it's hard for a child because 
a child never never should have to pick who who should I love more. You know, it should be I love I love my mom equally. I love my dad equally. Um, you know, their their drama and their what they got going on. Please don't force feed that to me. You know, because I I'm going to have my own separate relationship with my father, and I'm going to have my own separate relationship with my mother. So when the child, when the, when the mom or the dad starts feeding negative um, talk about the other parent, you're, you're not allowing that child to develop their own positive relationship with the other parent on their own. Yeah, that's, that's real because uh, I was married for 15 years before I went through a divorce, hence scary mm -hmm. to marry, right? And mm -hmm. I remember having that conversation with my kids at the time that, me and your mom were going to separate and mm. you know, possibly divorce. Like we're trying to walk them into this and not kind of just throw everything out there, throw that one time, you know, one yeah. adjustable. And I just never will forget that scene in my head. Cause my daughter was just like shocked. Oh my God. You know, so you never mm -hmm. really want to put that pain on a child, but uh, I guess this is going to go into the next question as well. And what do you say to the husband and wife, they go through this divorce, or they say that they're going to stay together for the kids, even though mentally they divorced, mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. they still together. And they're like, you know, we're just going to do this for the kids. Mm -hmm. What do you say about that? Because I hear that a lot. But yeah, what are, what are your thoughts? Now, now that I'm older and I've, I mean, I'm not the oldest person, but I've, I've experienced a little life and I've been able to see see what a relationship is and how it's supposed to look how it's not supposed to look so what i would say to that is um i would say don't stay for the kids uh i would rather um give the child a tough pill to swallow than you know at that moment um put them into therapy um you know, make sure that they're, you know, connected and, and in community because just as much as the parents need community during that time, the child is going to need community. Um, so making sure that they're not, you know, intending to harm themselves because a lot of things that go outside out of our control over is overwhelming because the child realizes that they have no control over that, their parents separating. So ensuring that the kids are, um, Get, getting them mentally prepared for what they're about to experience. Um, and I would definitely say uh, just just allow the give your give your child the, the hard truth, um, because I'll tell you the consequences and the cons of a child being raised in a home where the parents, you know, have fell out of love a long time ago or um, is toxic because some things uh, I, I don't know if I can sit here today and say I believe in, you know, like falling out of love. And I can't say that I don't believe in it, um, but I will say that, um, you know, once that mark hits and then the parents say, OK, this is what we want to decide to do. Um, or even before that, like even before, like you decide that and you're trying to play it off around the kids, um, the kids will start noticing like little things. They'll start noticing dad's always agitated or mom is always miserable. Mom is always annoyed. Um, and then that'll start rubbing off on the kids. You know, the kids will, the kids won't be in a loving home. Um, they won't see, you know, mom downstairs cooking breakfast for dad happily. You know, it'll just, her face will just show like pain and sadness and misery. Um, and then your child's going to start to wonder, I wonder, you know, if it's, if it's year after year, your child is going to be like, mom, what's going on with you? Like, I haven't seen you smile in years. You know, I haven't seen you um, tell daddy love him in years. Um, and then your child, unfortunately, when they go on to have relationships, especially women being emotional people, yeah. um, it's, it's really the woman, um, that, cause you know, men, um, if, you know, they may see that their father, you know, still was like the man around the house and all that. But, um, with the woman, it's, uh, conditioning her, especially if domestic violence is involved, you know, like just toxic, um, it's conditioning the woman to believe that this this living of this family um, lifestyle is OK. Mm -hmm. um, it's OK for, you know, they might hear something, um, you know, up late at night, the parents are arguing and 
that conditioning, you know, like I know some, some parents, I always say most parents try to keep that away from the child, but you know, children are not, we are not <laughs> like, we are not, uh, we're not slow to like what's going on. We can see it. We can feel it. Um, and I just, I just do believe that parents should know that, that they're not hiding anything from their kids. Um, and once we feel like you're hiding something, it actually makes us even more curious, you know? Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. So the, the nosy part starts coming in because it's like, mm, something's not right. So what I would say to that is um, what you're showing your children is more important than being together. Um, it's, if, if I can see my parents separated and they can respect each other separated then together and disrespect each other, I believe that's the better way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Because kids, they do feel that. You don't even have to tell them the news yet because they'll get older and they'll, you know, I remember just my mom always just being upset. Mm -hmm. You know, just this whole thing, you get older and you just start to get, all these revelations and you learn so much you're like oh, mm -hmm. oh now I see why my dad was this or I see why my mom and, and it yeah. all it click you know and you start to get um you're like I think as you old get older you have less uh patience for certain things so like you can see your parents annoyed you know easier you can see <laughs> your parents irritated you know like all of that just you can hide it like when your kids are young right but when you, when your kids get older, they be like, "Ooh, mom got a short temper," or, and then when dad comes in the house from work, if if like I would love for my children to see, you know, my their father coming in from work and I'm happy, like, "Hey, honey," you know, like, "Welcome home." <laughs> but if I'm rolling my eyes, like, you know, like, "Where was you at?" You know, like just negative energy, you know, that's so not healthy for children. So it's all about. Um, I've learned it's about healthy over over anything mm -hmm. and they would think that's normal they would think that's dysfunction is normal so mm -hmm. when they get older and once she starts to date or once he starts to date they have this attitude about themselves that they just think is normal because they grew yeah. up in. and it's a level of acceptance too like i'm already used to this i know what this is you know and it's kind of comfortable too because you've seen it so it's like oh this feels like home you know <laughs> mm -hmm. but home wasn't even good so you know, and it's it takes for you to um do some unlearning sometimes for you to figure out that home wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah, there's so many places we can go with that, but I, I definitely want to respect your time. How uh, we talked about co-parenting. <laughs> How can after going through a divorce, ex-husband, ex-wife, they got these personal issues going on still, but how can they effectively co-parent like how yeah. do you feel about that as far as you know mom talked about this earlier mom spewing venom dad shutting down kind of thing but how can they effectively co-parent because now they're in two different households so it's all about um four words it really is um i think it's five words honestly <laughs> um it's these five words that I just pray that every parent remembers and it's literally the best interest of the child, mm -hmm. best interest of the child, whatever serves the child's best interest. If I can put away my feelings for the other, other parent, if I can put away my tension, my resentment, my bitterness, my anger, my frustration, um, my unforgiveness, if I can put all of that to the side and say, this is the child I have to raise the best way I can. That's, that's, that's really what it is. And I know it's easier said than done. Um, and I don't have any children right now myself, so I can't really speak to parents that do have children. Um, but I would just, I would just love that children can just, I mean, um, parents can say like, Am I keeping this, am I keeping my child away from their father because I'm mad at their father or because the father really will, is not, is not in their best interest? Um, if the father is an alcoholic, okay, maybe it's, that's the best interest to keep the child away. Or if the father is homeless, that's the best interest to keep the child away. But if the father has done something um, to the mother that 
was spiteful or something that was just revenge, you know, their own situation, their own beef. Even the mother still has to say, I still have to allow you to see your child because you're this, this, this son or this daughter, daughters need their, their dads and uh, sons need their dads mm -hmm. in different ways, but they, and they're both essential. Like one is not greater than the other. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say to that is like, um, what are your intentions? Like when you're doing the things that you're doing, like, am I keeping my child away from um, their, their father because um, we're not together and I'm just mad, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know he probably got somebody else who, you know, and if, and if that's important, like you want to know who's around your child. So, but just be an adult and say, okay, this is the new girlfriend. This is the new who, um, you know, whatever it may be. Oh, this is, you know, they're engaged. Mm, you know, you know how some people have that like little attitude towards it. But it's like, if this woman is a good woman or this man is a good man, um, you know, you, you did your analysis and everything, then if your intentions are only or your, your uh, reasoning is only because I can't believe they moved on. You don't, you could be, you could be uh, blocking a blessing for your child to be loved. You could be blocking a blessing for your child to be, um, you know, you know, cause you don't want them to grow up and you don't want them to say, well, I didn't see dad growing up. And then your the dad is trying to explain, well, I tried to see you and your mom, you know, kept me away from you. And you know, it could be vice versa because I do know that there's, uh, you know, single dads as well. So um, it's just a matter of like really asking yourself, regardless of what's going on, regardless of what that other parent did to me, if if this is for the best interest of my child and my child is going to be better off because they saw their parent growing up, I allow them to communicate with their parent growing up. I allow them to... Um, have their own relationship, even if the other parent is a bad parent, mm -hmm. it's important that you allow your child to see that for themselves. Because what's going to happen is if you put so much hatred into the other parent, they're going to look at you like, now I hate you, yeah. you know, <laughs> yep. because why would you, why would you force feed into me a bad, a bad, uh, a bad um, perception mm -hmm. of my mm -hmm. father? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or my mother, like, now I'm looking at you weird and, you know, crossed because, you know, and then it's, and then it makes me think it, it, it stirs up so much emotional turmoil because it's like, um, it's like, why couldn't my parents just, some, some children are even upset because they don't have parents that love each other. You know, some parents, some children just grow up with parents that didn't have them in love, you know, it's kind of just like, you know, I just met you. I never loved you, you know, so that it's hard for a child to grow up and accept that. So the least that you can do is make it less complicated on the child and allow them to form that relationship because they're already going through so much, um, especially if the child wasn't really born in wedlock. And mm -hmm. um, it's just so many different things they got to deal with uh, step, you know, step brothers, step siblings. So Sometimes children are already in mess. So the, the the thing that I would want parents to do is just try to make it easy for the child because we should never have to choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of times when um, and, and I'm speaking from going through a divorce, you know, you were in your pain cycle where you're processing your own childhood trauma, even if you are aware, even if you are aware enough to consider your childhood traumas and thinking how that can affect your child. You know, you have to be aware enough to be like, you know what? I don't want to deal with, I don't want my kid to deal with what I've been through. Yes. You know, so I want to make sure that they're good despite how I'm feeling. Yeah. You know, because sometimes you got situations where somebody stepped out in the marriage, you know, you got infidelity or you got, bad money management you know you might have yeah. lost the house or just all kind of these different things so you're just Wait, and you make a good point if i can interrupt you really quick because um, i'm really big on um i'm really big on you know bringing children into a healthy environment 
bringing children into a stable environment. Um, some people know what their situation, like I do know unplanned, you know, pregnancies do happen. Um, but a lot of the times is being mindful of who we, and who, of who we have relations with, you know, like really vetting, you know, like, <laughs> because Talk about it. it's, it's like a lot of the times, um, and especially if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you didn't see that positive, like from your parents growing up, if you didn't see that positive relationship or that po positive marriage, because I, mean, I do, I do believe that there's a, a true difference between mom and dad together versus mom and dad married, you know, <laughs> um, mom and dad together can be a little toxic, even married, but the mom and dad together, you know, it's, you're not, you're not really not showing the commitment that, parents really should have when they're bringing in kids in the world. Um, and, you know, with marriage, um, the vetting of, you know, like, you know, when you, when you don't grow up and you don't see it, um, especially if your parents were never married, um, sometimes you don't know how to vet, right? Mm -hmm. And you get with men that, um, I'll speak for women, sometimes we can get with a man that, um, emotionally connected to, you know, cause we, we are emotional women. Um, some of us are, I know some women say that they're not, but that's our thing <laughs> being emotional. And, um, we get, you know, emotional and we start connecting ourselves with this man, we, our finances, our body, our, uh, uh, signing leases and contracts and, you know, just connecting. And we didn't, we don't even know who we connected to. We don't, we didn't, um, and I, and I'm starting to believe as I'm, as I get older, it's like, it's not so much about where the man comes from because we can't control where we come from. Mm -hmm. It's, it's what we're doing to unlearn what we saw, you know, mm -hmm. learn and unlearn because there's some negative things that we have to unlearn or we're going to just repeat it. And then there's some things that we have to learn how to do because we never saw it. Mm -hmm. So I would say with the vetting piece is um, a lot of single people just need, we really just need to get better as society at vetting, you know, like that would just really help with, um, you know, and something, you know, things out of our control, like we can't control somebody steps out. We can't control, you know, um, you know, we, that's not something that we can foresee coming, but if you're just intentionally dating someone that um, is disrespectful to you, that, you know, hits you, um, we have, to, we have to really just stop and be like, if I were to bring a child into this mess, what example am I going to show my child? And I think about that, like with me not having kids, um, I think about, um, uh, when I, when I do, you know, begin, you know, hopefully I do plan to get married one day. And when that time does come, I do want it to be, uh, definitely a vetting process like I'm going to ask like will my kids look at us look at our marriage as a role model in a healthy way or will they will they look at us like this is something that I don't want like yeah. I want to be that that those parents that my children be like mom and dad they always doing this and they always doing it you know like I don't want them to see me like irritated and you know or despising their dad like I want them I want, I want everything to, that comes out of my mouth to be good about their father. And I want everything about, from that father, from their father, my husband, hopefully, mm -hmm. I want everything good to be coming out of them. And I do believe, um, you know, it's all about just learning like healthy communication. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I'm doing in my, in my single season is just learning more about myself. Um, so that way I'm not, partnering up with somebody and I'm forcing a connection yeah because if you don't know yourself you can't it's hard for you to connect with the right person you know you'll get with somebody you'll be like oh I thought I was this but mm -hmm. deep down inside you know deep down inside like I'm I'm a queen you know and if you don't know inside of you that you're a queen you can settle you can you can settle for being treated um poorly yeah. like so it's, it's all about self-awareness um, because it, it, it starts with us. We we create the foundation and we create the environment that our children are going to be living and thriving in. Mm, I agree uh, because uh, 
shameless plug. That's why I created the course Dating Intentionally, Five Ways to Know uh, if they are the one. Mm -hmm. Because, and I don't know if you're familiar with my story, but I met my wife when I remarried. I met her on Instagram. We married six months later. And there's just some things that we have like this A and B column. I think the A column is what's really important. The B column is what we want. And a lot of times what we want outweighs what's important. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm just using that as an example. So you, not you, but let's just say, okay, I like my man tall. My man, he need to be six foot three. He need to make, so- Mm -hmm. that's your want list but does it align with morals value (laughs) character Mm -hmm. uh, accountability all these different character traits that no matter how good you are to a person if they don't have them they're just not going to work for you he can be mr sexy but you're going to soon find out that that sexiness wears off you're going to be like it it was cool but now it's too late because now you got two kids by him yeah oh that's so good and i do want to comment on that um I just got out of that. I'm in my early 20s and I realized that can get you in trouble. Um, You having your looks over values and alignment, that's that's unequally yoked. That is uh, is a recipe for disaster. Um, And your parents aren't going to, your children aren't going to look at you and say, oh, mom is you know, mom and dad look so good together. They're going to be like, mom and dad, they don't need to be together because they be acting crazy. You know, like <laughs> just because it's not about how y'all look together. It's about how well aligned and connected you are, you know. Um, and when you think about your children, you know, um, even especially with men choosing women to be the mother of their child, you have to look at that woman and say, what I want my daughter to be a reflection of this woman, you know? What I want my daughter to carry herself the way this woman carries herself. What I want my woman, you know, my daughter's hygiene to be the same way that this woman, you know, what's her upkeep like? Does she respect herself? What is, you know, what kind of clothes does she wear? Um, What's her credit score? Does she know anything about stability? You know, like, all of that stuff. Um, and I and it's sad because uh, I know, like, especially in the Black community, a lot of us have children young before we even ready. Um, and uh, that's, that's for many different reasons. Um, but I would say is that, especially with the influence of music nowadays, we talk a lot about, you know, bodies and, you know, who got the biggest butt, who got this. And it's like, but that's not, we're, we're being influenced negatively. Like it's not even the right way. Like, and it's all about as women, um, you know, guarding your ear gates, guarding your eye gates, even as men, guarding your ear gates, guarding your eye gates, um, because we're, we're influenced on the daily by so much. Um, and fortunately for me, I just started getting serious about reading my word um, because you know, it's hard to vet if you don't even know what God says about a man. If you don't know what God says about a woman, you know, I think the only verse I knew really was Proverbs 31, you know, uh, you know, being a Proverbs 31 woman. And it's like, well, the Lord, you know, he says so much about men and being equally yoked in the Bible. Um, and when we try to figure it out on our, on our own, um, especially not even have an example, like it can just lead to recipe for disaster. So I just wanted to say on that too, like, especially like, um, just like, I think betting is a skill. Like I, I really do think it's a skill. <laughs> Everybody doesn't um, have it. Yeah. And, it, and it's like, especially when you're meeting people, like I, so I recently got baptized um, last year and it was, Thank you. It was it was honestly eye opening. I stopped living double lives and it, it was so beautiful for me. I stopped serving two masters. You know, I was like, mm-hmm. I'm a queen, but I'm just in this way. I'm a queen, but I'm I'm accepting this from men. Like it was very contradicting stuff. Um, so I'm at the place in my life where 
I'm stern about this is what I will accept. It's no longer I'll accept a little bit of this. Maybe I'll accept. No, this is what I'm accept. This is what I'm not going to accept. Mm -hmm. And um, it's beautiful when when as women you get to that realization like this is what it is. This is you know these are my standards. These are my non negotiables. Um, and really standing on it, like not allowing a man to emotionally press you or you know just really holding yourself as a queen um and where you meet men matters you know like that's true you might be you might be able to meet your man you know i've read everybody thinks you gotta meet your man at the church but there's some people at the church that you gotta be cautious about too so it's not a particular place but you know if you're going to a a, a club because i i used to have this thing you know i know you said uh tall tall guys and that was honestly my my um what do you call it? That was my... your Achilles heel. <laughs> what do you say? Your Achilles heel. Achilles. I, I heel. guess. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, that, yeah, yeah. That was that's my, your weakness. Um, yeah, yeah. That was my. That's what I wanted. That was yeah. my type. That was my type. That's, that's what you call it. Um. So brown skin, you know, tall, and it's like that. Like that in itself. Why would? why wouldn't being a God-fearing man be my first choice? Like, why Why am I thinking about how they look versus what's internally, you know, what's going on internal? Um, so now my type is, like, emotionally emotionally healed, you know, like, unlearning, like, self-awareness. Like, those are really, that's my type. It could You could be Asian, Black, <laughs> mm -hmm. African. Um, but it's, it's honestly about... Uh, and I'm allowing myself to be more open to different kinds of men, you know, like the way that they look, because as women, we can miss our blessing, like having a certain, having a certain standard and a certain type, like that's how you get with the wrong men, you know? <laughs> most, most people, statistically, most people don't, and, and people can look at this in a negative sense, but I understand where the statistics are coming from. A lot of times you don't even marry your type. Ooh. Like you have in mind, you know, and that's not saying that you're not attracted to this person or things of that nature. There's things that you desire. But as you get older, you realize what's important. You're like, OK, yeah, she's fine. But at the same time, you might like a certain type. But you like, you know what? I can do without Billy in a blank, whatever that is. You know, And that makes me a little nervous because. My type is like, I don't know. It's like, I, it makes me nervous. Like, oh, you know, when I do see a guy that's my type, is this bad for me? Because I'm just going off, you know? So it's like, I'm a little nervous now, but. It's 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 not. I, because you have to, I think it all depends on what's your value system. And and don't get me wrong, because looks are important. We, we can say looks are important. They are. But at the same time. It's and I tell people, my wife have eighty percent of everything I want in a woman. Eighty percent. The other twenty percent is just like nobody's perfect, right? Everybody has their flaws. Everybody has their stuff. I'm like eighty percent. That's a B. That's a pretty freaking mm -hmm. good grade, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So people yeah. are walking around looking for a hundred percent. Yeah. I'm like, if they were a hundred percent, why would they want you? You ain't but that's a good point. Yeah. And, you know, I have somebody tell me <laughs> you see you're making your it's like you're hitting these points because it's bringing stuff up for me. But thank you. So it's like I have somebody tell me like you ain't all that. And I got I got offended at first. Right. Mm -hmm. But I had to tell myself, I say you walking around here like you just the most perfect person. And we're really not like none of us are. And that doesn't mean that you're not a king. And that doesn't mean that you're not a queen. You're just, you're, we all have flaws. We all have scars. You know, we all have baggage that we're bringing when we enter new things. So it's like, you know, we're going around looking for boxes to be checked, but we got to remember, we don't check all the boxes, you know? And that really like I was I was honestly frustrated and upset when that person said that because I was like, who are you to tell me that, you know, right. you know, it's pretty much you trying to lower like humble me. But I'm actually kind of thankful for it because it put me into a realistic 
mindset. Like when I'm out here looking, you know, not looking, but when I'm out here um, being approached by men or uh, a possibility of um, a dating relationship occurs, I need to be mindful that the same way I'm trying to check boxes for them, they're trying to check it for me. And I might not meet all of the boxes. Exactly. So, and I'm really big on like a man with um, education. I just really am. Um, and it's, I don't have my PhD. I'm not the most educated um, and I am still fairly young. So I do plan a, you know, but I have my bachelor's and I'm looking for a man that got a bachelor's, you know? <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And then, but I, but then I do have to remember like that man could be, you know, have his own welding business or that man could have his own lawn care business and be a multimillionaire. Like you just never know. So you're looking for the same things as you, but that doesn't mean that, that your other half is not going to be equally yoked to you because their assets aren't the same as yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And remember, so, and, and as I said on a, a previous podcast, I always say that we are all beautifully broken, right? Mm -hmm. We're all beautifully broken. And it's like, take your pick. You broken just like I am, right? And if you're looking at it from a spiritual perspective, we are we are only made perfect in him, right? In Christ, you know what I'm saying? And that, that's from a spiritual perspective. But just for most people, we realize that we're broken. We all have hangups. And like you said, just like someone is checking your box, they're doing the same thing. You, you're doing the same thing with them, vice versa. So you just yeah. have to know what's best for Imani, not what the world says, what they think a good man. Because being a good man is subjective. Like and that's it took me a, it took me a long time to understand that. You know, like I'm checking good men off like you know, respectful. And yes, these are all necessities of a good man, but I was thinking of it like, you know, he can provide, he got to be the breadwinner. But a good man is, is a loving man. You know, a good man is a selfless man. A good man is a, a man that can sacrifice, you know, like it's, it's, and I think, I think once we start getting away from so much on what a man has and what he has accomplished because those men can be ooh, behind doors you know you just don't know but if you have a man that whatever his job is but that man is just loves his family and a protector of his family those are non um, tangible things that it's, it's important to really consider yeah and, and and to tie everything into child and to into children and childhood, if he didn't get those things as a kid, say, i.e., maybe his parents went through a divorce or maybe, you know, he didn't have the best circumstances, a lot of times we're expecting him to be something that he's not, something that he's never got. Mm -hmm. You know, so at the end of the day, we mad because it's like, you supposed to be this or you supposed to be that. Like we have this image in our head. There's a quote that I love. There's a quote that says, in our mind, we have the picture of the perfect person. And you can do one of those two things. Either you can accept the picture and tear up the person mm. or either you can tear up the person and accept the picture. Oh, I got a picture in my head that I need to tear up. <laughs> so oh, I got a picture in my head for sure. So think about how many people we tear up. And I'm throwing up my air quotes, trying to get something that we seen on TV, something, you know, that we didn't even see in our own neighborhoods, but maybe we saw on a TV show and we trying to find this person and we're tearing up people in the process and then we wonder why this whole dating scene is all screwed up because everybody's running around tearing other people up not accepting them for who they really are and they whew, it's like a seller telling somebody i can't love you you're gonna hurt them and then be like i can't love you like just tell me you can't love me off rip you know <laughs> yeah like and then it's important though because some men do tell us and we don't listen it, 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 it's like 
there's some people out here that'll be like, you know, especially women, high achieving women, and a man would be like, ooh, I don't know if I can, you know, handle you. And, um, you know, some people even say, I don't think I'm good enough. And then the man, the woman is like so sympathetic that it's like, yes, you are. You know, we have so much sympathy. And it's like, well, he told us and then we get hurt, you know. So yeah. it's it's a lot of it's it's I don't know. It's like it's like a mix um, out here. And I think the biggest thing for all of us is just holding ourselves accountable for the part that we play. Yeah, Imani, and this is why it's important to have community. This is why it's important to have mentors because mentors can see what you can't see. Mm. You know, they can see stuff because you're in it. It's almost equivalent to, I don't know if you're into sports or in football, but I always use these analogies. The offensive coordinator can see from the top view what's going on with the play. So if the quarterback throws the interception, the offensive coordinator is going to tell him because he's in the booth looking up high. He's going to say, I saw that happen. You should have threw it to him. Mm. You know, this is why I drew up the play a certain way, because I can see stuff that you can't. This is why I'm trying to get you to see. So mm. we don't have mentors and people in our life to help us see things because we just believe that we know everything and you don't know nothing. And you can't tell me nothing because he's a good man or she's a good woman. And you make a good point. Um, you make a good point. Uh, I think a part of dating, Sean, is being willing to embarrass yourself. And being being willing along, I think it's a difference, being willing to embarrass yourself and being willing to um, be embarrassed. Like when I say embarrass yourself, that means you're taking risk, you know, calculated risk, you know, taking a chance on love. But when I say being embarrassed, somebody checking you, checking something, your mentor, your your parent, um, your sibling, your your best friend telling you like, you know, you messing up with this one because that's embarrassing sometimes, right? Especially when you really be like, you know, she's the one, and somebody, you know, you out here just being a fool, you know, especially women. I mean, I can't say especially women because you know, I I don't want to be talking so down on women um but you know just in general like you know some women and I, I here I go because I'm <laughs> I gotta say it I've seen I've seen women in particular um a man will show them that they don't want them and I'm not saying this over here like I've never had bad experiences myself I'm just saying women in general and I am a woman so I'm yeah. talking about me too yeah. but um women will see that a man doesn't want them and they'll just be out here embarrassing themselves, you know, with this man for 10 years, not married, like stuff like that is just embarrassing, you know? Um, but and they, I, they I, can I, Oh yes. And I, who, and it's sad though, because when, especially when we don't see that growing up, you know, like we don't see healthy. So, and especially women, we start being like, Oh, I feel bad for him. You know, like he didn't have this and he, you know, and it's like, but we're hurting ourselves in the process, you know? And then you so, possibly can miss out. You can possibly miss out on your Prince Charming messing around with Leroy. Woo! You could have Leroy alone, but you could possibly miss out because you spent an all that you spent 10 years. And, and if you don't heal properly, that 10 years of bitterness, you're going to end up resenting men. And based that experience, your your one experience, yeah, on all men or all. Women. And I'll say I'll say that um, with Sean is one thing I do. I've had some experiences that I didn't necessarily uh, didn't feel good with men. And um, I'll speak to the ladies. Um, I'll just say this to encourage them is like, um, I wouldn't say after every because hopefully there's not a lot. But if you do come across, you know, hearing, you know. You know, a couple um, failed situations, failed relationships, failed marriages, especially um, you have to do a, a dump, you know, and what I mean by a dump is get all that negative stuff out of you. Um, I refused through my negative experiences. I said, this is this negative experience, mm -hmm. but I'm not about to go through the rest of my life carrying that like I'm not doing that. 
And what I mean by dump is dumping that, that anger, dump it out, you know, go to therapy, um, figure out what you did wrong, you know, figure out what you could have did better. Mm -hmm. Um, figure out what you still need to heal from, you know, what is, what, what is triggering you that your relationships are not working? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and it's, it's all about dumping that out, healing, and then stepping into your next one, expecting it to, you know, don't just go to the next one. Like, mm, I already know what you about to do, you know, like, and because if you don't dump Sean, mm -hmm. you're just going to go into each new you're going to continue. You're going to, it's going to fail and you're going to go into the next one because it's going to fail because you're carrying, you're carrying your failed, your disappointments from the past into your new relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, can you really give that person a clean slate or is you just going to come into a relationship with, he got two strikes against them already based on your, you know, your previous relationship. He haven't even done nothing wrong yet. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. She, and she that could, not done anything wrong. Yet. That could mentally throw you off when you already coming in looking at a man like, "Ooh, you just you 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 look like my ex." Like you know, like <laughs> it could be a look like mm, I already know, I already know what that means. You trying to do this, you know, like if you already coming in with those uh, preconceived, you know, thoughts, you know, it can throw off your judgment. It can throw off your uh, your your uh your perception because you're looking at the, you're looking at them through the lens of disappointment you're not even looking at them for who they are i love that we got totally off track but i love <laughs> it's all good i want to ask you these questions real quick before you go because we are running out of time from seeing your parents relationship what did it teach you about marriage Ooh, um so my parents were never married. Okay. And um there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah, definitely something. Um I just paused because that's something that I would have loved. Um, but I'm I'm learning, Sean, not to um, you know, it took me a lot of processing um the reality that my parents weren't together. Um, it took me a lot of processing that. You know, um, they're never going to be together, right? They're, you know, you know. Sometimes we can live with hopes of like one day, you know, we'll be this happy family again. Um, so that's something that I would have loved to see. Uh, and it's not necessarily like the stereotypical mom cooking dad dinner, you know, dad coming home from work. It's just like going to sleep at night in peace because your parents love each other, you know, going to sleep, you know, you, you ever look at kids and you just see like, you know, their parents are together, you know, their parents look like they have a healthy connection and the kids look so carefree, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so it's a feeling that comes with uh, parents being together and their children seeing that. Um, so, you know, I don't, uh, the older I'm, you know, now that I'm getting older, I, 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 I used to, it used to be really hard for me to not be, um, not be bitter about it, you know, not be like, cause I'll look at some other, you know, friends that I know and family and mm -hmm. I'll look at them just, you know, mom and dad going on a, you know, we're going on a family trip and it's different when it's, you know, um, your biological parents, you know, versus some outside, um, you know, people that's just coming in that you have to get used to. So, yeah, I learned uh, what I'll say for your question is that I learned that um, hopefully I can do my best to um, not show my children perfect, but just show them love, um, show them love, however that's going to look. Yeah, I, I do believe stability is important um, and this in this day and age, um, the dominant home is the single parent home back in the day it used to be the nuclear family but the dominant family now is just a single parent home predominantly led by women so that's the culture that we live in now uh and that's a that's a whole different episode for a different time last mm -hmm. question because uh we could talk for hours <laughs> is it easier to love yourself or someone else 
Hmm. It's no right or wrong answer. I would say it's easier to um it, it depends because it depends on what season you are in your life. Mm -hmm. Um if you're dealing with, you know, after you make a mistake or after you uh you know failed at something or especially people that are hard on themselves, you know, you got a certain standard for yourself, you got a certain expectation of yourself that you hold yourself to. um faithfully um you can easily you can easily go into self-hatred um make mistakes uh you know so uh, you know and then also when you know sometimes it takes for those mistakes to have the greatest self-love because it, it depends on where people are in their lives because um some of the greatest self-love comes after the greatest self-hate you know like and The greatest self-hate can sometimes be, um, you know, a failed marriage or um, sometimes it can even be us. Like, why did I go cheat? You know, why did I um, why did I think that this woman was better? You know, like hating yourself for that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you start feeling unworthy and then you start feeling um, empty inside because you feel like, wow, I'm just a bad person. I'm a horrible person. Um, and that comes after um, making a mistake. So, but then when you start to realize, like, I got to snap out of this, like this whole, this whole negative self-talk, you know, cause you, you can go, you can go into a whole rabbit hole, right? Yeah. Easy. You make a mistake and it's like, I'm stupid, you know, and mm -hmm. I ain't speaking this over my life, but yeah, <laughs> somebody, not else, somebody else could be <laughs> like, they stupid, they, uh, you know, they, um, They they gonna keep messing up. I mm -hmm. you know they'll never get it right. You just start going all the way down. But mm -hmm. it's it comes to a point where you have to say, I'm a queen. Like you have to wake up and say, queens make mistakes. And I and I and I do believe once we start associating, um, we start accepting that two can coexist. Mm -hmm. Like learning and unlearning can coexist. Mm -hmm. um failure and success can coexist right um <laughs> happiness and sadness can coexist right it's all about giving ourselves grace to fail and um that's when self-love comes in because you start being more accepting and you start and i'm when i say accepting is you start trying um you stop trying to force force yourself to feel a certain way mm -hmm. you stop trying to avoid certain feelings right like Oh, I know what this like. You it'll get to that point where you'll be like, oh, I know what this is. Like, you know, this is just the devil trying to condemn me, or this is just the devil trying to remind me. But the Lord turns that around if you allow him to, and he'll use that as a humble reminder, like, this is where you came from, this is the experiences that you had. Look how much better you are now, you know. And that's when the self-love starts coming in, right? Where you're like, Lord, thank you for. revealing to me how capable I am right Lord thank you for revealing to me how um how beautiful I am right like I didn't I now don't need another man's validation like I I'm starting to love like and I you know once you once you get to that point of self-love um because I think a lot of us expect self-love to come natural right like oh just looking in the mirror Yeah. I'm the best, you know, I'm the best girl looking, you know, I'm the best looking mm -hmm. woman ever. But sometimes it just takes for you to accept yourself as a messed up person, right? It's, you know, God loves us messy. Like, right. you know, God loves us in the sin. God loves us in um in our in our mud. Like we we're waiting to walk through the garden. But if you can just sit and say, I don't got it all together. Mm -hmm. Um And, uh, uh, you know, I'm working on this. I'm, I'm working to get my credit right. I'm working to um, treat, you know, treat myself with more respect as a woman or as a man. I'm working on my, um, you know, my development, my, my professional development. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working on, you know, getting this new job and advancing my career. Like if you can just accept yourself in your mess, mm -hmm. um, self-love can come so I know I got a little off track but to answer your question um it depends on where you're at in life and um 
it's easy to to love somebody else because we don't we don't got to deal with them all the time right but you you with yourself all the time you know <laughs> you waking up with yourself you you going to sleep with yourself so it's like you got to accept like this is me um how you look you got to accept um only thing you don't gotta accept is uh settling you know it's always about improvement and growing mm -hmm. but other than that if you can just um love yourself as you are then self-love is just it just flows yeah i agree uh there's so much that you said in that that so many uh takeaways uh, i remember my therapist said to me one time about the way you talk to yourself she said if you're down talking yourself you wouldn't let anybody else talk to you like that so you shouldn't talk to yourself like that oh yeah and, so, and allow yourself to be human <laughs> yeah a lot of, yeah right yeah and again a lot of that goes back into childhood because if you had that positivity spoken over you it's easier for you to break that negative cycle because you're like my mom and dad always told me I was this or that you know that I was more than enough, that I was, you know, what God mm -hmm. said about me and these different things. So yeah. when you have that baked in your DNA, it makes it easier. Speaking so. life into your children is is love. Yes. Yes. Because when they you got to prepare them for the world. Because they're gonna get it. Because you know, there's a lot of negative Nancy's out there and, and yeah, they're gonna mm -hmm. get it. Uh Amani, this has been a phenomenal mm -hmm. show. Uh we we could have kept going. I'm gonna have to bring you back <laughs> on again. We got to yes. do too because there's a whole bunch of stuff I ain't even get to ask you. you know, we just I really enjoyed it, Sean. Thank you, thank oh, you <laughs> for sure. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Yes, so uh, my name is Imani. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Money Moon Forever, spelled as money, spelled as moon, and spelled as forever. So all one word. Um, I'm on LinkedIn as well. Um, so you can reach out to me on there and follow me on my journey of family law. And I hope that you all learned something valuable tonight. And thank you so much again, Sean, for having me. No problem. Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go and connect with Imani. She's killing it on LinkedIn. Um, she just has so much information, just so just a wealth of information. And I always want people to be educated. So make sure you go and connect with Imani. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you share this video with a friend because you never know who needs it. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you share this with someone as well. But you can leave a rating and review. And by doing so, that helps me get more uh help people to notice me more online and through the podcast and also put you in a drawing for a free amazon gift card so make sure that you uh, <laughs> yeah right who doesn't like free stuff so make sure you go and leave a rating and review this has been a phenomenal episode this is sean heineman with special guest iman eden clemens all right brave arts community take care thank you bye